Vegas and Stolmeyer. Two bruisers there go for it. No one giving on that one. Casamani straight up. Great effort. He's trying to take charge here, and that's what the force needs. Well, they need his kind of play. He's got the goal for him. He's doing more than that. He's really throwing himself around and showing the kind of energy that all these players need to show. Now it's the force with the ball. Stolmeyer for Hoskovy. One more goal could turn it around here for Cleveland. All kinds of time left, but they've got to establish something. Ward. Deeks to the right. Played into the box. Nothing there. And Thompson will knock this one out of play. Six minutes. 26 seconds remaining to be played in the second quarter. The Force cut the lead to three. Minnesota leads. 4-1 is your score. Delight. Can your dollar deliver at Dale's? Series one game apiece. That series goes on to San Diego later on this week. Kansas City winning it 5-1 to one here. Minnesota leading over Cleveland by the score of 4-1. to one. The Cleveland Force coming in with the second best overall record in the league next to Tacoma. Coached by Timo Leokoski and assisted by Jay Hoffman. They've had a great year. Haskovy tried to lay it off. Here's Ward and he missed. That one hurt. That really hurt. That was beautifully set up by Cleveland. It should have been a goal. Stolmeyer in to Florio, scores the goal! That brings them back, it's 4-2 Minnesota. Well, it just, the team really is beginning to rally now, as we thought they really could, and as we said, a four-goal lead was pretty tough, but all the goals came early, so there's a lot of time to recover. Stolmeyer during the work in the corner here. Marinaro cannot uh, really get it away from him. He touches it inside. And this quick shot once again through a screen. Cantor worried about Haskovy closing him down. And, uh, you know, no chance for Letary as we look again. But that's the goal that should have been scored because that was well set up with the free uh, kick situation. One player letting it go through. The other one getting the shot but missing. But there is the shot that doesn't miss. A critical goal for both teams. So that timeout really has not worked for Minnesota. And they can't call another one. Because you get one per half. They'd love to have one now. Ward the other way. Although there can be other stoppages, like an official's timeout, or Cleveland could take one. Bernie James with it. Right now, Cleveland should not want to call a timeout because they're starting to come alive. Peter Ward. Nice deke around his man. Over the line, leaves it for Haskaby. Three on three. So Ward scores! Well, don't throw the dirt on the fourth grave yet. Well, we knew that sooner or later these players simply had to come to life. They were just shadows of themselves in the first quarter. But look at Ward beautifully getting down the left-hand side there, beating Byrne and then getting it to Huskabee. Now it's Huskabee and Ward together. That's a great combination. Beautifully finished by Ward. He had some uh, wonderful touch on a goal last night that was important for Cleveland. There again, he just buries it in the upper corner with a gliding touch. Cleveland within one goal. Comeback for the Cleveland Force, but they've changed it all around, Seamus. If they played the way they were playing before, they had no chance, but that goal by Casamani was the spark that they needed. It sure was, and now they're on a roll. Um, they've got three goals in the period of uh, less than four minutes. I mean, just to less than five minutes. And that's desperately what they needed, but this is the, this is the sport where that sort of thing can happen. So the four-goal lead, I'm sure even the strikers realized it didn't really mean anything because it came so early. 41 seconds apart with those last two goals by Cleveland, which shows the potency of their attack when it's cooking. Fogarty and company, everybody wants a shot at this. Now Alan Willie, right side for Kinsey. Dargle on him, off the boards, coming in Hudson, and off his left foot, it goes out of play. Good chance for Minnesota to say no to some momentum that Cleveland has started to pick up. Well, a good shot by Kinsey here. I'm sure it was intended to come off the boards. And uh, Hudson, just was about to hit that on his left foot, got a sliding tackle threat from his left, and that must have uh, distracted him a little bit because I think uh, he might have been able to get to that one and knock it in for the critical fifth goal. But as it is, Minnesota, having led by four, leads only by one. Benny Dargo with it. Changes the whole complexion of the game and the atmosphere as well. They're not booing in Cleveland right now. 
King is broken up. Down the right wing, Kinsey. Gargle has to chase him. Takes him down, but got the ball. No, he didn't. They're going to call a foul, and that'll be five on Cleveland. Gino DiPolito spotting the ball for Ray Hudson. Four to three, Minnesota had a four nothing lead. Hudson across Canter, the shot blocked. Alan Willie after it. Off the boards, picked up, Hazamani. Brings it over the midfield line, 4.34 to go. Second quarter, 4-3, Minnesota. Casamani into the right wing corner. Now comes out, left footed shot blocked by Etherington. DeLuca, low shot, that's blocked. Dargo picking it up again. Cleveland maintaining possession. Left side, Meppel to Michael King. All the way across the canters there to Alan Willie. Now for Kinsey. And play back to the right foot of Gary Etherington, who traps it there. And now it's Hudson. Playing it for David Byrne at midfield. Byrne, they do the give and go, and now Byrne will pick it up with Mepham on him. Nice cut, Byrne, left-footed shot, high and wide. Good chance there for Minnesota. They've not had a good chance in the last couple of minutes. By several minutes. Lona Vegas. Off of David Byrne, and now picked up by Thompson. For Stan Cummins, ahead of the right for David Byrne. Off the boards, coming in, and Stan Cummins to score the goal. And that's called the give and go. Plenty of give, plenty of go, and no pickup there for Cleveland. Well, again, Cummins reading that play beautifully. He's been setting up goals in for the last two days, but this time he sets his one up by giving a good forward pass. He's not tracked down. Byrne knows he's got no shot. He plays it off the sign. And look at all those players who came back in yellow shirts, but they were all outrun by Cummins, who simply wanted that more and ghosted right through the defense. You'll see him going through, and nobody's there to stop him. Four yellow shirts all arriving too late. Nobody keeps up with him. And uh, the big fifth goal for Minnesota. So Stan Cummins, who had three assists last night and had a couple of assists already, has a goal as well. And the MetLife candidate list for Minnesota grows larger and larger. Marinaro over the line. A 5-3 lead. That last goal gives Alan Merrick a chance to get his breathing back to normal. I'm sure if you checked his pulse, it's varied from the time he had a 4-0 lead to when it became 4-3. And now it's 5-3 Minnesota. Lota Vegas. Coming back. Letary coming out if he needs the help. Back for Tino. Peter Ward chasing. Letary picked off. Stolmeyer as Letary backs up. Left side for Ward. 5-3 Minnesota. 2.53 to go in the second quarter for Haskeby. Ward was open, but it was just behind him. Now Kinsey knocked it back to Alan Woolley as Kinsey hits the deck. Stan Cummins going long for Woolley. Too long. P.J. Johns is there, sliding it left to DeFlorio. Gino DeFlorio up for Haskeby, stepping in as Greg Thompson. Blocked, and here's Kinsey. James got there first, or else Kinsey could have had a two-on-one with Woolley. Tough play defensively by Bernie James. DeFlorio the other way. Gets it around his man, Lola Vegas. DeFlorio cut it back. I'm not sure what he was doing with that one. Hoskiny was open and so was Stolmeyer, and that ball was to neither one. Now on the left wing side, it's cleared up, and there's Bernie James again. Setting a left for DeFlorio. To Hoskiny as a target man, turning to his left to get Lola Vegas off the board, but Letary gets it off the carom and distributes right side to David Byrne, picked up by Dargo, and he steps in and wins it. Cleveland has to be careful. Five fouls, none on Minnesota. Dargo's pass is deflected and right back to Letary. 148 left in the second quarter. Minnesota leading it 5-3. to three. Well, the edge is off their possession game, obviously, because Cleveland are just simply working a heck of a lot harder to, uh, to prevent Minnesota from playing that fluid style that they were uh, doing so well. See there, they've lost the possession again. That's been a pattern for the last five minutes or so. Uh, Minnesota losing possession somewhat more easily than uh, they had been doing the entire first period. Uh, that's a little bit because of their own mistakes, but also because the Cleveland is not playing this sort of uh, sitting back game they were playing early on. Cleveland will get this ball as it was deflected out of play, landed and hit someone on the Cleveland bench. But last touch by Minnesota. Darkling around the boards, right side to Casamani. Casamani is blocked, and now it's taken by Marinaro. Plays it back dangerously, and Letary just fires it off with a left foot. Mepham off the boards for the rookie, King. Blocked partially by Etherington, but Casamani will get it for King. 
try to cut around Eddington, but Eddington doesn't buy the fake. Eddington back in position, a clear to the red line. Meppa, pressured by Cummins. In the right side, DeLuca to Michael King. Lays it off for Darga less than a minute. Second quarter, Etherington with a block. Etherington set a playoff record a year ago with 47 block shots. Some players get that in the season. He got it in the playoffs. Mepham with Marinaro on his tail. Safe play right back to P.J. Johns. Toss to midfield, and Darga is there. Left side, Dennis Mepham in front of Casamani. Mepham to the left side boards for Michael King. King has uh, been out there forever, J.P. Yeah, he's had quite a lot of playing time. Okay, someone we've not seen in a while is DeLuca cut. Shot off the post, came out. DeLuca again, and missed kick that. I was going to say, Seamus, we've not seen Craig Allen or Paul Kitson in a while. No, no Paul Kitson has not played well at all. He really doesn't show uh, that much energy, that much interest, maybe. Oh, there's the shot. You see how lucky Minnesota was there, that ball coming off the crossbar. They had uh, very little luck last night. They've had a little bit uh, this afternoon, but they've also rattled in five goals, so it's not all luck. Well, last uh, night, remember, Cleveland scored twice off of shots to hit off the post and then in off Tino Letteri. Their uncharacteristic goals for Tino. He said that uh, he would have really personally felt worse about the game had he lost last night because he felt that he let in two that he normally should have had. He felt that it was a, a good good part of luck on Cleveland's part because normally you've got to leave a little bit of room and they just happen to get the right bounce and in off of Tino. Letteri, the most colorful goalkeeper in the MISL and statistically this year, he ended up with the best numbers in terms of the goals against average. Ball played to the right side. Alan Willard across, headed down, and Kinsey got an eye against Stolmeyer. Here's Lona Vegas. And the horn will sound as Dwight makes his move. Good first half of play. Minnesota appeared headed for a blowout, but these games can change rather quickly, and thanks to Ali Casamani's goal, Cleveland got themselves right back in it. So instead of a 4-0 lead that Minnesota was enjoying, the four strike back. They get three. It's 5-3. Strikers with the lead at the half. Budweiser presents On the Attack, a comprehensive three-part video series on attacking soccer. Program one covers fast footwork and fainting. Program two, dribbling skills and drills. And program three, shooting and heading. Get one tape for $19.95 or all three for only $49.95. To order, call toll-free 1-800-972-585. Don't miss out on the fun and excitement. Bud Sports and ESPN bring you the major indoor soccer league game of the week. It's the MISL on ESPN. Check local listings for times. One of sports. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. On behalf of Volkswagen... At the end of the first half of play, are leading over the Cleveland Force. Your score, 5-3, to three, and several players, Hector Marino, David Byrne, and Stan Cummins, each with three points, and they've been involved in every single goal. Right now, let's go downstairs for the check presentation on the part of the Van Jam officials. We've just been given the signal by the Van Jam officials that they're ready to announce today's winners. Let's go directly to the field and find out who's the winner, the red team or the blue, and see who's the best jammers today. Good afternoon, Van Jam fans. I'm Bill Byers on behalf of Volkswagen United States. It's my great pleasure to announce today's Van Jam results. A total of 74 were jammed by the second place team. And with a grand total of 93 jams, today's Van Jam victory goes to the red team. Here with us today is the president of the local chapter of Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Sue Jarvella. Thanks for joining us, Sue. Two of our jammers here have a check from Volkswagen made out to MAD for $1,860. That represents $20 for each jammer on the winning team. He's uh, keeping up what he had started last night. And that was the first goal, his second of the uh, playoff, with Cummins, of course, the key to that by his early pass. If he takes that ball and dribbles once with it, then the chance is gone. But the quick early touch 
was what set it up for Marinero. And there he is again. Cummins this time uh, looking for some help. This time I think he's going to try to find uh, Marinero as he does. And Marinero knows that Byrne is over there somewhere. It skid through to Byrne and he knocks it up into the, into the roof of the net. Now this is only at 4.51 of the opening period. And Byrne uh, continuing on a goal scoring tear as uh, Minnesota depends very much on him to get those goals. And Marinero saw the opportunity and played it to him. So that was a 2-0 lead. Uh, and then amazingly, just less than two minutes later, Marinero again gets into the action, this time fighting his way to the boards and setting it up for Dangerfield, who gets inside his defender, DeLuca, and uh, just wants it more. And that was the key to the whole first uh, period. It seemed that Minnesota just simply wanted this game more, and Cleveland was very casual. Uh, Byrne once again became involved in the scoring uh, about four minutes after that, or three and a half minutes, when he gets inside and beats his man. When once again, Stan Cummins was the player who touched it into the penalty area, and Byrne coming from behind a defender just out hustled him and uh, stuck in his toe and knocked it in four nothing. Incredibly, after ten minutes and one second of the first period, and they, so they went into the second period with that four goal lead, which seemed just inconceivable. We all thought people would come out like gangbusters, and they really came out like puppy dogs in the first period. King helped out a little bit. Here you see him going down to the corner, and Casamani also fought very hard for this. Now here is DeLuca setting up Casamani with a little touch there, but Casamani does most of the work for this. He takes on Cantor and then gets to squeeze the ball between two defenders, and Tino is just flat-footed there, can't react to that ball as it's released so quickly, squeezes him on the near post. That got him back in the game a little bit at 4.45 of the second period. But they really needed another goal and uh, because 4-1 really was trouble, and this time it came from DeFlorio, and Stolmeyer worked hard in the corner to win the ball, and it has to be setting up here but eventually it gets touched across to Stolmeyer in the far corner he uh, is not about to be knocked away by Marinaro who has been uh, the enfant terrible if you will for for poor uh, Minnesota and there he just scrambles his way to it and once again squeezes that ball into the corner that lots of close in shots in indoor soccer have got to be kept low because goalkeepers cannot see them coming through as quickly and that pulled him within two then, surprisingly, 11 uh, seconds later, a minute and 11 seconds later, Peter Ward and Haskaby combined. You wonder when that combination was going to click. Haskaby with a nice touch, but what a fine, soft touch into the upper corner of the net by Peter Ward. A critical game uh, goal, indeed, to pull him within one. And then Minnesota was to score another one with Stan Cummins from David Byrne, and it's 5-3. Minnesota at the half. Back here in Richfield, Ohio, it's a 5-3 to three lead for the Minnesota Strikers over the Cleveland Forest as we take a look at the brackets in the Eastern Division race to show you what's going on with the series. Minnesota and Cleveland in this one. It is one game to nothing in favor of Minnesota. Baltimore and Dallas are even up. The winners will play each other in a best-of-seven series to determine the division champion. And on the opposite side in the Western Division, you've got Tacoma and Wichita Wichita fighting so as not to be eliminated this afternoon in Wichita. And Kansas City, San Diego are even at one apiece. And for our fans around the major indoor soccer league, in Dallas, their next game is Friday. In San Diego, it is going to be on Tuesday night and Minnesota on Wednesday. There's some first-half statistics. Cleveland really came up a lot better in that second quarter. They ended up with six shots to four for Minnesota. They are down 14 to 10 in the shot category. And I hate to use the cliche, Seamus, but I'll use it before you. The next goal, I think, is an important one. Minnesota, by the way, has never lost a four-goal lead, we're told, in their history. Huh. That's a great stat for you. Steve Kinsey and Alan Willey over the ball, and we'll see what takes place in the second half. We'll see which Cleveland Force team is ready to play, the one that started the game or the one that had a pretty strong second quarter. Alan Willey going long on the left wing side now to Hudson. Ray Hudson in the corner. Blocked by P.J. Johns. And now it's Gino DeFlorio. Across his own red line. Broken up. Alan Woolley right back over the line. Kinsey open. Try to play it back. Stolmeyer with a block. Couldn't clear it out. Kinsey off the boards. Good touch. Wanted his own ball, but it's broken up. And Cleveland looking disorganized in the opening second. But here they come. Bernie James over midfield. James broke the block shot record in an individual game with 13 this year. Here's a header. Two out. And Haskaby couldn't find it. Coming back. That ball took a, a difficult spin for Kai, it looked like. Coming off the glass. Peter Ward. Ward has one goal. Left foots it. Blocked by Etherington. All the way back for Bernie James in front of the force bench. Now to Peter Ward. 
congratulations to the force organization. Third straight year that they've led the MISL in attendance. They have become the model franchise in this league. Peter Ward with it against Byrne, and Byrne doesn't buy that fake. It's back out to Dargle. Benny Dargle with the right wing. Now for Gino DeFlorio. Came into the lineup at the start of the year when Craig Allen was hurt and stayed in there. Haskovy. By the arc, blocked by Etherington. He's trying to break last year's series block shot record of 47. Off to a good start in this one. Haskovy. Turning nice fake. Off the boards for DeFlorio. It's deflected out. DeLuca. The shot, and it looked like Lota Vegas got a piece of that. But Cleveland starting to show some good offensive signs, Seamus, finding some open players and controlling the ball better than they started the game doing. Well, that's just right. The control is the key thing here because the finishing still hasn't been good. Peter Ward had a good heading opportunity there that he probably should have put away uh, about a minute or so ago. But on the other hand, they are still retaining possession. They're keeping Minnesota boxed into their own third, and they're not letting him get out, which is what they were doing with abandon in the first uh, period when they were letting him just sort of scroll up the... Up the uh, field here. Now they're really pinning him down and uh, holding on to the ball. That's what they need to do more of. Casamani on this corner kick. 5-3 Minnesota. Try to play it across. King blocked that. That one looked like it was intended for DeLuca. But King was in the way of that one and it's come all the way back to P.J. Johns. Johns at the red line. His own red line. Now approaching midfield. He's not gone that far so far in this game this afternoon. Casamani, now to Dennis Mepham. Back to DeLuca. Fogarty and King got their feet all tangled up, and now LeCarrie will throw long. Jeffries getting behind Benny Dargo. But now the ball is lost, and P.J. Johns has to scramble for that one. Long toss up the floor. Michael King, there's that shoe again. I think he's going to get a, a size smaller shoe, Seamus. That's, uh, he has just set an MISL record for losing his shoe twice in the same game, and now Dennis Mepham. Loses control of the ball. Is there a shoe salesman in the house to get a, a custom-made shoe for Michael King? That's what Gino DiPolito is saying to Howie Chizik down there on the floor. Well, Michael King is seeing a lot of action. Uh, he's a big, strong guy. He obviously can, can help them a good deal. He wouldn't be playing in this critical game for them were he not expected to make a major contribution. As you pointed out at the half while we were uh, off the air for a little bit, Craig Allen has sort of uh, been, I think, unceremoniously benched, really. Yeah, it's tough to say with Craig because he does have some uh, problems with his feet, although those foot problems enabled him to score six goals in one game. I'd like to have his feet. Down the left side, Dennis Meppo. We'll try to check that out for you, though, to see if he has indeed been sat down, as I imagine Paul Kitson was, or if there's an injury at all. Here's Bernie James off the boards and Letteria with a stop there. James will get it back. Out at the right point, Stolmeyer. Now to Casamani. Picked up by Ray Hudson. Now on the left wing side. Map him around the boards and Letteria is right there. Incidentally, Hudson wearing the captain's armband in place of Alan Woolley. That change was made late in March with Woolley struggling. Alan Merrick decided to take some of the pressure off Alan Woolley and had Hudson become the team captain and Hudson not a uh, unfamiliar person for that role because whenever Willie was unable to play in a game Hudson became the team captain previous in previous years on the right side Cummins holds up on the ball what a great first half and great first game Stan Cummins had this is game two in this playoff series in Minnesota trying to win two here in Cleveland David Byrne held really held on to by Stolmeyer as the ball is shot on or off goal by Marinaro. Byrne doing a great job of shielding the ball away from Stolmeyer, which takes a lot of physical strength because John is so tough indeed to get to try to reach around and touch that ball away. Bernie James. Double team. Now it's played up and Lona Vegas steps in the way of that, but this one is cleared over three lines in the air. So it brings the ball right back to the very first red line that the ball went over. On the restart. It's dumped into the corner. Lona Vegas with a block. Michael King. Nice deep there, but Lona Vegas doesn't buy that fake. And it's cleared all the way back to P.J. Johns. Minnesota coming here with 17 players. You can dress 15 as King heads it wide. He'll get another chance. Off the boards. Nobody home to help out. DeFlorio. Right side. Right across. James put it upstairs. But Cleveland searching for the open man. They found him, but that time Bernie just got underneath that ball. 10.31 well, to go. Yeah, Bernie's shot was not uh, what he would like, obviously, but he, he did get into the right 
position, uh, which is encouraging for Timo Lekoski, the coach, because he really expects these uh, these defenders to go forward and add something to the attack and try to uh, create some extra numbers down there, whereas Minnesota, because Minnesota simply is so good at getting a lot of their players back and uh, doesn't do much good if you're constantly three against five. Mark your calendars, soccer fans, for those upcoming dates. Can't tell you who's going to be playing because those will be later rounds. Kidsey wide on that shot. Fogarty looking for the rebound. Thompson makes his run, but it's behind him on that pass, enabling Ward to get it. 5-3, Minnesota, 10-12, left in the third. Ward gets by Willie, but Fogarty there to help out all the way back for Tino Letieri. A member last year and the starting goalkeeper for Canada's World Cup team. Fogarty on the left side. Now to Stan Cummins around the boards for Kinsey. Steve Kinsey now for Stan Cummins again. He draws two players to him. Knocks it back out to Fogarty. In the corner for Marinaro. Hector Marinaro plays it off the glass. And Ken Fogarty is back for it in the neutral zone. Cutting it into the corner. For Cummins. He pulls the goalkeeper out. And a nice play by DeLuca to head it wide. That looked like it was heading in. And now it's Cleveland. DeFloyo hit Dargle in the back of the ankles with that pass, enabling Minnesota to take it. Marinaro over the line. He and DeFlorio. Right side, Thompson plays a bad ball back the other way, but Fogarty will get control. Fogarty's pretty versatile. Last night, uh, he sat out the game and ended up being the color commentator on Minnesota's radio broadcast. He uh, probably thought last night, Seamus, was tougher. Well, I don't know. Anybody could be a color commentator. Sure. <laughs> I mean, what do you need, right? Leteri sending it long. Stolmeyer with a clear the other way. And now on the right side, it's Etherington. On the left for Dan Cantor. Up for Burn, it's knocked back, and Tino Letieri will get it off the carom. As far as we know, Craig Allen on the bench, it is a coach's decision, meaning that he has been benched. As far as we know, we've been unable to get anything uh, in terms of an injury on Craig Allen. He was mentioned in today's morning newspaper story, Cleveland Plain Dealer, as not doing something last night defensively on that last goal. Although you could look at several other players as well. So he didn't get off to a good start. Shoe comes off and Dennis Mepham. Well, maybe it's not just Michael King that's having a problem. They may go to the, sh the same shoe store as Etherington takes in midfield. 5-3 Minnesota, 8-13 to go. Third quarter of play. There's still a lot left in this one. Marinaro looking and Stolmeyer denies Kinsey the ball. Dan Canner picking it up. Block. Canner goes in tough on the tackle and won the ball. Good play. Good hustle by Canner. On the left side, Jeffries to Kinsey. Kinsey the turnaround shot, and he gets underneath this one too much and clears it out of play. And I've seen Kinsey score some goals from that spot, but not that time. Minnesota still leads by a couple. One, what we haven't seen it yet is Alan Merrick talks to the troops on this side of the floor, and Timo Leakoski is obviously doing the same kind of thing on the Cleveland side. There is Craig Allen who we feel has been benched, and Paul Kitson as well, started out the game playing as a regular. Both of them did, but changes have been made by Timo Leokoski. Timo had to make some changes because things were just not going well at all. And you look at the record. That's a good graphic for you. The record without Craig Allen, 8-13 and 13 with him in the lineup. They're 26-5, and five, so he does make a difference. Just his mere presence out there will force teams to mark up on them, although with Cleveland, sometimes that can be very tough to do because they have so many great scores. And they, and they do miss a Valentine out there tonight who is out with an irritated kneecap, and uh, that decision was made to scratch him after the warm-up. Well, that is a big loss. Uh, Carl Valentine is a tremendously important player for them and a, one, a player who puts a lot of pressure on defenses because of his speed and his good finishing ability. Not having him is really a crucial blow to them. But uh, they're coping pretty well and trying to get back into this one. They still trail by two, though. Bernie James in the neutral zone, knocking it back to Peter Ward. Now a cross for Stoyer. Right side for the Boyle. Now Fogarty steps in and wins the ball to Marinaro. Minnesota playing the way you expected them to play. Not feeling the pressure here because they've already done what they set out to do, and that's split the first two games. Anything else is gravy. DeFlorio in the box, and Lola Vegas is there. Not a good finishing pass there. And on the right side, Cummins trying to come back. He does well to just control that pass. Marinaro picked up by Stolmeyer. Marinaro looking back and now finds Lota Vegas. Dwight Lota Vegas makes his cut. Peter Ward makes the block. 
Picked up by Fogarty, and now on the right side, Dangerfield. Picked off by Ward. Dangerfield stepping in and got Ward. I thought he got the ball as well, and maybe that's what the officials felt. Here's Hudson. He'd love to get that back because Dangerfield was wide open. Ward looks like he may have hurt his shoulder as he gets up slowly, and now off of Fogarty, it goes upstairs and out of play. My angle, or our angle, Seamus, is tough. I thought he got ball at first, and that that's why it wasn't called. I don't know if we'll have a better chance to see it. Well, here's another chance as we look. Oh, I don't no. think he did get the ball. He missed the ball. Played between his legs. He very yeah. clearly got something else in yeah. the form of Peter Ward, and Ward understandably just uh, aghast that that decision was not given in his favor. Great and camera shot from the opposite angle. That was not the angle that we saw it, or else uh, was pretty obvious that the ball was missed. Tom McLaughlin, our director, providing us with that shot. 6.30 to go, third quarter. 5-3, to three, Minnesota with the lead. Mepham now will play it back to P.J. Johns. He'll toss it with a right hand up for Benny Dargo. A two-goal lead for the strikers. Dargo to the near boards. Leaves it off for Michael King. Across the way it goes. Mepham looks, and he and DeLuca almost get their signals crossed up. Played around the boards. Etherington and Casamani. Good matchup right there. Casamani, who got Cleveland back into the game almost single-handedly until his teammates rallied around his goal. Now it's out to DeLuca. Dargo to Mepham for Michael King. Three-time All-American from Fairleigh Dickinson. It's broken up in the corner area. Kicked away. How about this? Neither team with a foul this quarter. Mepham and DeLuca getting together. Pasquale DeLuca is broken up. David Byrne will knock it left side for Dangerfield. Casamani got in the way of that. Took it away from Mepham. Mepham sees some daylight. Goes for it. Dangerfield, nice job to deny him that space. Mepham now trying again, but Byrne will block it. Up for Cummins. Nice fake to ding it around. Benny Dargo, but Dargo with a good recovery. Stan Cummins, great idea. Now he takes it back. He's so small, but so quick. And he's and got those little short steps, I think, that really deceive you because it, he doesn't look like he's covering much ground, but he's getting his body in the way all the time. Casamani makes a couple of digs, plays it left side, Stolmeyer blocked. Saving the day was Marinaro with a super defensive play. You don't expect that from the forwards. Or midfielders, in this case Marinaro with Cummins and Byrne. And Marinaro playing up front. Jeffries now coming on with Kinsey as Marinaro drops back. Now it's King. Left foot and shot, he scored from about 40 feet. 5-4, Minnesota still leads, but the rookie will remember that one. Well, we talked about what a great effort King has made in bringing this team uh, to life. Uh, I see all the veterans going over there to congratulate him as well. They might, because that was really a classy, classy goal for Michael King. Just buried in the upper corner with a lethal left foot of his. Now watch him see him cutting inside. Thorberty lets him go, and look what he does with it. Just hammers it in the upper corner. What a surprise to everybody, including the keeper. He kept his shoe on for that one, and the left foot strikes, and Minnesota leads by only one. Guess what I saw in the woods today? Another futuristic space vehicle? Yeah. And it had little green creatures inside. Yeah. Uh, where was this one from? Mars? No, Volkswagen. Keep that two-goal lead going into the fourth quarter. Then that changed the complexion of the game a lot because then they know they can just defend strongly for five minutes or so and then they're in good shape. Here's Hudson and a chance from Aaron Hour. He hit the post. He'll get his own rebound. Great hustle. He beats Ward to it. Shot is stopped on the short side. That one play right there, I think, sort of typifies why Minnesota has done so well. Haskovy, get it by Cantor. Haskovy, the shot, a right foot save. Tino Letieri, big when he had to be there. It's still 5-4. The strikers by one with plenty of time left. We're in here with Bud Sports and ESPN. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies watching this one this afternoon. On the right side, James will leave it off for Ward. A one-goal Minnesota lead. That one could have found its way to the back of the net. It was such a screen shot. David Byrne now to Hector Marinaro. When Minnesota's needed that big goal, they've been able to get it. We'll see what they do here at Las Vegas. They're still leading, but by only one. Nice cut on to Florio. And Ooh. Dwight shot goes way wide. Hudson put it on net, and Johns makes one of his better saves of the day. That's a critical save. If he lets that one go, it negates that Michael King goal. Marinaro heads it the other way. Kimsey will pick it up 
James on him. Out to the left point area. Low to Vegas. Against DeFlorio. He's got that good left foot. He brings it right. Sends it to Hudson. A low shot. And P.J. Johns is right there. Good thing because Marinaro was lurking for another goal. Up for Michael King. He should be playing with some confidence now. DeFlorio over the line. Left side. Meppa. Let's take another look at it. Meppa gets the goal, but it's touched over to him by DeFlorio, and there's the shot. Goes off Timo, uh, off Tino Letiri, and we got to wonder a little bit about that one. That was that Tino probably should have been able to uh, take care of, but a good move by King that set it up in the first place. Seems to go off his legs there, JP. I'm not sure, but it uh, looks like he was leaning a little bit to his left. The ball went to his right, and he could not quite do much about it. But uh, Tino's not going to be happy with that goal. Tito looked long for Willie, and now the force get it. It's 5-5, and a great comeback for Cleveland. They were down 4 nothing. Here's a through ball, and Meppa missed. Fogarty. Look at King going up for that one. And they're going to call a foul on Michael King for going over Fogarty. That's, that's a tough one because, first of all, I mean, after King hits the deck so hard, it would have been worth it if he at least got the foul the other way, but he was the man that went over the top. That makes it extra painful. Here's Marinaro. It's 5-5. Cuts right on Dargo. In a corner. Shot blocked by Benny Dargo. Dargo's pass is blocked a bit by Marinaro. 2.07 to play in the third. 5-5 is your score. Michael King off the boards. No one has Dargo. Score! Cleveland with the lead. This is one of the greatest comebacks that I've ever seen in the MISL, and I've seen many. Well, they seem to be scoring a batch of three, and this man, look at this great pass off the wall, played right into Dargle, and Dargle has no problems finishing it off, but the pass was absolutely magnificent from King because he did not try to play it to the player, which would have been a little tricky. He said he played it into the corner, knowing he can come off the wall right to Dargle. Dargle beats Cummins and also beats Letary. And now Cleveland scoring in streaks of three now, obviously. they got three in a row now in the past two minutes and 32 seconds. They had three earlier on in the second period. They're up six to five. Ball played off of Marinaro. That time after that goal was scored, Cummins and Marinaro looking at each other and a little bit of bickering going on there now. And Minnesota losing the confidence and the ease in which they were playing this game at the start. Now the pressure's on them. Having a four to nothing lead and control, if you could say that word, in the MISL. That's a tough word to use these days. Peter Ward against Etherington, and he shoots that one high and wide. Stolmeyer, in deep. Played it in the backfield block, rebound, and Ward was denied. Ward in there battling with the Florio, and the force maintained possession. Has to be a shot goal! You know, he said earlier he's got to come to life, and he certainly has with a vengeance. A little touch here from Stolmeyer, but this is all Haskovy. Takes on low to wages, sees a little bit of a space there, and it spins between two players as Hudson was watching, uh, I think, Casamani, and uh, gave a little bit of space where Haskovy says, pretty easy. Look at Stolmeyer. He doesn't want to win too much, does he? Great enthusiasm. Here comes Minnesota. Willie, who's been very quiet in this series. Try to find Kinsey, it's broken up. 57 seconds left in the third quarter, and Cleveland leads it 7 to 5. Three goals in a minute and 33 seconds. Cummins with a shot, and that's wide. Willie the shot, that's blocked by Bernie James. So Cleveland has outscored Minnesota 7 to 1 since they were down by 4. 
quick shot was blocked, but there was a whistle before that. That'll be the third foul on Cleveland, the last one for obstruction. Wait till Alan Merrick looks at the tapes of this game. He'll think he's got two different games on there. On the left side, Kinsey. All the way back to Dan Cantor. Cantor looking, finding Stan Cummins. Now it is Fogarty across the way to Dan Cantor. Crowd yelling for defense. DeFlorio obliges against Cantor. One on one, and Cantor breaks him up. Ten seconds left. Still in the third quarter, but the Force have taken a lead. 7 5. James looking long. Fogarty heads it, and it will go out of play with two seconds left. Tell you, Tino was so upset, I don't know when he took off his headband, but I don't see it anywhere, and I don't know whether it's in the back of the net or if he tossed it in the stands. Might have been after the goal that went in that he thought he should have had on the Mepham shot, but then Dargo was wide open, and he was frustrated at that. That could be where he lost it as well. And then Haskaby, well-placed shot that seemed to have some curve to Tino's right. But talk about a game-changing complexion. We've all seen MISL games that have done that, but... Cleveland was playing as poorly as I've ever seen them play in the last five years. Minnesota as great as I've ever seen them play, and it's completely changed. One of the things that makes this league, I think, so great, and the sport's so great. Byrne clearing it off with a flexion, the horn sounds. Alan Merrick happy that the horn sounded. He'll get a chance to talk to the troops. Haskaby and Byrne separated by Dan in the back. And here's Kai Haskaby doing what he does best. Getting a nice little touch from Stolmeyer, but look at him bending this ball around, and I think a foot came up there. It might have been Etherington to try to block it, but I had to say, Tino Letieri looked a little bit slow in reacting to that shot. It wasn't really driven. It looked a little bit bad when it finally got to him. Well, we saw he had his headband on on that shot, but it's disappeared. Here's a Stolmeyer shot. That's blocked. You know, and since the first period, Cleveland has outscored this club, uh, Minnesota, seven goals to one. They scored. Uh, they were scored upon four times in the first period. They now scored four goals in the third period. So, uh, it, how these, this, uh, that's not surprising in some ways. Minnesota may have found themselves uh, ready to play hard and uh, get the lead, but they couldn't hold it. On the right, Lota Vegas shooting oh. it too high. I was going to ask you, was it too easy for Minnesota? Did they get uh, too lulled into the kind of game that it was? Well, it's pretty hard to put together eight periods of great soccer two nights in a row or one night in the next afternoon, and that's what was asked of them. They'll still be happy with the split. Here's a quick deflection, and that one from Hudson sails high over the glass. Had that one been directed a little bit lower, then the Minnesota Strikers might have had a nice goal for themselves. As it is, they trail by a couple of goals here. Seven to five is your score. Minnesota what? trying to even up the series, or I'm sorry, Cleveland trying to even up the series at one apiece. They didn't want to go into Minnesota Wednesday down two games to nothing when Minnesota's home playoff record stands at 12-1. and one. Exactly, and uh, even if Minnesota loses this match, uh, which it looks as though they might now, although again, two goals, what does that mean? What do four goals mean? Oh. Um, nonetheless, they have sent a message to Cleveland, which they can't help but notice. They may have gotten seven goals to one on them in the uh, second and third period, but nonetheless, they know they're going to have a terrific scrap in their hands up in Minnesota. Stan Cummins against Mepham, a shot, and P.J. Johns could save. It comes right across. Mepham plays it back. Maybe a little higher than P.J. wanted it, but he's got it anyway. Around this time last night, not even 24 hours ago, this is where Cleveland fell apart, but if you recall what we were saying earlier, Cleveland at that time had uh, a 4-2 lead, and that's really what they got here. They've got a two-goal lead. But last night, a little different than this game. Byrne and Casamani meet the turf. I think because of uh, a problem at the end of that third quarter, the referees called both captains to the side when we were doing our last commercial and probably laid the law down a little bit as Byrne and Haskaby had words at the end of the third quarter. Now it's Fogarty off the boards. Should be a great game three in Minnesota on Wednesday for those fans in the Minnesota area. Fogarty going along. Corner area, it's Hudson. Looking to turn, and it's blocked out of play. Last touch by Benny Dargo. So there'll be a kick-in coming up here for Minnesota. The attendance just over 7,000. And it's disappointing, but uh, I'm sure Cleveland didn't want to get stuck playing on Mother's Day. But such are the breaks with the schedule. Cleveland 
has seven of the top 15 playoff crowds. And when new teams want to come into the MISL, this is the franchise they study. Hudson shooting it wide. I'm a deflection. Willie looking, turning, score! Alan Willie. Oh, and the it. quiet man makes some noise there. I say quiet, Seamus, because he's not been noticed in the first two games. Well, terrific shielding of the ball here. That's what set it up. Willie is so good on the turn. Uh, but you said he has been quiet. We're going to see the whole sequence here as Fogarty sets it in play. But the critical thing is what happens when Willie gets it. It's played into him here. Now watch him hold it. Keeps his defender off who eventually commits himself. And then he's able to turn and knock it on the top of the net. So with 13.07 to play, don't count the strikers out yet. They're certainly not. They're down by one. He does what he does best. Turn around. He's in some open space, and he just buries that ball. I took advantage of his defender overcommitting himself and going to the ground, and that just gave him enough space in which to move. And uh, no chance for the goalkeeper by the end. Dangerfield tried to work to give and go. Bernie James says yeah. no to that. Well, it doesn't work. You're quite right, because both Bernie and Stolmeyer got back into the penalty area and tracked down Kinsey. Ward looking. Oh, he had Haskaby behind his man. Haskaby may get it. There, good holding piece done by the way. On the right, here's Ward. And this one will go upstairs. I thought it was holding on Lona Vegas part, but if you can get away with it. Hold and you get the job done and you've got to call it a good play because whatever he did there definitely slowed Haskaby down, that one step that he needed. And Ward with that bad shot uh, was made to look bad, in fact, because just as he hit that ball, it came up surprisingly uh, for him. And of course, on a surface like this, you expect the ball to do exactly what you want it to do because there are no bumps uh, to speak of. But that one may have, hit, may have hit a seam or something because it clearly did come up for him and as a result, he knocked it up into the crowd. There's some sparkles in the field. You may see that at home. Don't adjust your sets. There was a Bon Jovi concert here the other night. I guess that's part of the artifacts of a danger field. Got behind James. Gets his own ball and he missed. James, I think, got a piece of that. I'm not sure if Dangerfield stopped bearing down or not on that play, but looked like Minnesota was going to get the tying goal. Peter Ward taken down by Byrne. And a foul is going to be called on Minnesota. Byrne offering a hand to Peter Ward, but Again, Cleveland got into a bit of a lapse there, Seamus, and Dangerfield found oh, himself Dangerfield. open. Oh, Dangerfield. We'll worry. We'll think about that one on the way home, I think, because he had the chance, did exactly the right thing with it. That is, played it off the boards to get it back to himself, but wasn't able to turn it into the empty net. Did James get a piece? Could, Could be. Look? Could be. Here's Ooh. it off the boards, and DeFlorio couldn't quite get that one. DeFlorio will get this rebound on the left wing. A 7-6 game, Cleveland by one. And they had trailed 4 to nothing. We keep making that point if you're just joining us but in indoor soccer a 4 nothing lead so early and you made that point before in the game that it was early yeah, and was. Uh, the game uh, has so many different changes in it let's take a look right now while we're talking about this last Minnesota chance we'll see if James did get a piece well a good touch off the boards I watched Bernie coming in to the left no he doesn't no. Uh, he did bother uh, the keep the uh, uh, Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield, right. Well, that's his nickname. <laughs> that's his nickname. They call him Rodney, so you can get away with that. I covered for you. He did bother Dangerfield enough, but uh, Dangerfield really should have been able to. As we looked in the replay, yes, yeah. so uh, didn't see it quite that way when we first did it live, but the replay looked like that ball just got up a little bit on him. Here's Etherington. Good run from the back. He knows when to break, but this one, he got too far underneath it, and it goes out of play. But Gary Etherington, an all-star season he has had, that's the second time Gary's done that tonight. In the first half, uh, here you see him. He made a good run down the far right side and put one way up, uh, crossed it high. Maybe he's thinking of his old days in Giant Stadium with a couple of those crosses. But You know that uh, they've played each other seven times this year, and four of those games have been one-goal games. So it's been close. The one blowout was that 7 nothing game in Minnesota, which changed everybody's year around. Gave Minnesota some confidence, although they didn't end up winning in the end. Here's Alan Willie with a chance. Right in front, save, P.J. Johns. They had two players open, Kinsey and Hudson, either guy. Oh could have put it home. That could be the play of the game, because that clearly looked like it was the time goal with Cleveland in all kinds of trouble. Lola Vegas. Kinsey, turn around, blocked and cleared out. After that 7-0 shot, I don't know if I could complete my thought. Cleveland was 12-4. They won four straight after that rude awakening in Minnesota. Lota Vegas, 7-6 Cleveland. On the left side, Etherington getting it back. Hit his own player. That's, that hurts a bit. That was David Byrne who got that block. 
And now it's Lota Vegas chased by DeLuca. Nice cut to the middle to avoid that pressure. Over midfield comes Lota Vegas. In over the attack line. He and Marinaro crisscross. Hector Marinaro plays it in for Byrne. They wanted to go to Jeffries, but it never got there as Dargo steps in away and clears. Well, but King is doing a good job on uh, on Byrne on uh, marking him up and not letting him get to the kind of position he would like. Let's see if it continues. Yes, he's still marking in the penalty area. Fourth quarter, and we're down at 10.25, and that's a lot of time in this sport. 7-6 Cleveland. Marinaro high off the glass. Jeffries, that one goes high off as well. Fogarty, and that's deflected off the head of Michael King. Shot look label. Casamani was going back for it, but now David Byrne will pick it up. Good effort from Byrne, and a great one there. Casamani to King. Casamani in open space. That looked like a great ball, but now Terry is there. Oh, that ball, that pass initially looked like it had all the makings of a winner. Shade off to the left, as it turns out. Up the left wing side comes Alan Willie. Left footed shot off the post. Kinsey. Oh, right at the face of P.J. Johns. Now it's Kinsey again, looking for Fogarty. He's got to win that ball in the corner or he'd be beaten. Help from Willie, blocked Willie again. Good control for Kinsey. Man open, shot too high. Stan Cummins wants it back. Oh. That yeah, looked like it there. Oh, that looked like it. Pretty good time goal. What a great couple of chances that created. Looks like the first period last night all over again. Give and go. That has to be gets in the way. Imagine how deflated Cleveland would be, though, if they lose that two-goal lead again. Game of momentum. Willie heads it wide. James with a clear. Stays in play. DeFlorio. 7-6 Cleveland. Over midfield. Gina DeFlorio cuts to his right. Peter Ward waiting to change. As Mepham goes to the bench, Ward is on. At midfield, Haskaby. In over the attack line. Picked up by Alan Willie. Ty Haskaby holding. Dishing it off. Bernie James to Ward. Far side header by DeFlorio. And it goes out of play. And the ball belongs to the Minnesota Strikers. Tino Letary. Goodness, Minnesota has come right back into this game. They, they have reserves of energy that we would have thought uh, simply couldn't be there, having conceded seven goals to one in that second and third period. You think that would take all the starch out of them, but they really have showed tremendous fighting spirit as we look at the shots on goal there for the uh, match so far. Fighting but, spirit is one point, Seamus, and I think the character on both teams shows as well the fact that uh, Cleveland came back after being pounded in Minnesota 7 and nothing and backs to the wall and down by four goals they could have faded they came back and standing with Minnesota the momentum was clearly Cleveland's in Minnesota the better team in the fourth quarter they won't just give in here as Dangerfield takes it this Dangerfield getting plenty of respect right side for Marinaro Block. to look at a DeFlorio Play back to James in some traffic, so he plays it smartly to P.J. Johns. 8.23 left in the game. 7-6, Cleveland. Not a safe lead, though, by any means. Johns to Bernie James. Neutral zone, Bernie waiting. Has to look with him. It's blocked by Marinaro. To Dangerfield. Right foot trap finds Marinaro. Trying to get around James, and a good recovery by Bernie James, who was beaten on the initial move. Now Etherington. Cleveland can't afford, though, to give up the ball like that when they get possession. It burnt them in the first quarter. First half. Lota Vegas screaming for Etherington to make the run with him. Lota Vegas for Dangerfield. Blocked by Peter Ward. A good defensive play there by Ward. James off the boards and clears it back the other way. Cleveland returning to their old woes of uh, getting the ball upfield. Uh, Craig Allen has just come on, and the crowd has noticed it. It's his first uh, shift uh, in a long, long time. Well, Cleveland feeling that they need a goal and maybe some players are tired as well and a good psychological move one would think to get Allen out there and you would think that Craig is going to come back and think about playing defense as well because that might be one of the reasons why he was sitting out Lord of Vegas at midfield with Allen on him Allen's such a great offensive player only Jungleland Stamenkovic with more points over the last four years he had 50 goals last year here's Jeffrey along the near boards the battle with DeLuca. Two fouls in Minnesota. None on Cleveland. Out to Lota Vegas. From 40. Holding. In a few more strides. Beats Ward in the corner. Off the boards. And P.J. Johns cuts that off before it can be dangerous. Down to 645. Long toss. Allen. Fogarty knocking it back to Loteri. With Allen out there, you've got that long ball threat. We've seen him score many a goal in the long pass. And now Kitson on as well. So those guys have to be rested and probably a little angry 
that they were sat. We'll see if that has an effect on them. Six and a half to go. Burn to Cummins. The low shot off the post. Rebound. Burn couldn't get it. Now he turns and fires. This one goes out of play. He beat DeLuca to the ball, but couldn't quite make the play. Seven to six, the force, but don't go away. It's not over yet. He's setting up here across the center. As he moves down the left, he'll have Hudson coming in and Kinsey coming in. That looks like a sure goal as two players are there, but a great sprawling save by B.J. Johns, who covered a lot of the goal area by hurling his body across, anticipating the low shot. Kinsey could not knock it over. Take nothing away from Johns, but on that replay, it looks like Kinsey may have been slightly affected by Hudson's presence and thus didn't get it in the right balance the way he normally might have set up for a shot. Kipson out now. Ball is played back the other way. And now it's Letary. One goal games. Cleveland with a winning record. Minnesota close to 500, but one game below it. Marinaro and Meppham going to a dance school together as the ball is played back in the right to Fogarty. Look at how far out Johns is. He had to win that ball, and he does with a header. Craig Allen knocked it away from Las Vegas. Let Terry try to do his best to intimidate Craig Allen, but he got that ball, and that's what he wanted. Here's Las Vegas said midfield. Allen almost stripped it away. 5.37 to go. Should I say regulation time? 7-6 Cleveland. Headed straight up by Meppham. Hudson and Dargle. Watch out for Kinsey if he can turn the bicycle kick this time by Hudson, and it goes out of play. That's going to be one of the toughest kicks in the world to be missed. Well, it's particularly tough with a low goal like this, of course, indoors. We will see Meppham headed up in the air. The challenge in here by Hudson, and eventually it'll come over to him uh, from Kinsey, and he just can't quite get uh, get the quick. He had to get the shot off quickly because he knew he had some attention there. He would rather have uh, fallen down a little bit further in order to get uh, a better angle in the shot, but. At this time of the game, with only five and a half to go, you can't think about those perfections. You're pretty uh, darn tired, and you know, staying within one goal of this, of this team uh, in their own building, having one last night, is quite a remarkable feat. Ball coming back the other way. Dargo going to be calling a foul. Third one on Cleveland. Ball is played back down the left side. A willy shot, and that's stopped by P.J. Johns. Second foul on Cleveland. Two on Minnesota. Long toss for Kitson. Kitson and Cantor get together. Play back for Craig Allen. Allen holding it, going long, right side. Stolmeyer trapping it, cutting to his right. Almost ran into Peter DiPolito. And now it goes to Dargle. Off the boards, and it didn't go the way Craig Allen wanted as he had that left foot cocked and ready to fire. Mepham now for Kitson along the near board. Kitson out to Craig Allen. Try to find Kitson again, but Letary sends it right up the middle, and P.J. Johns is there. Up to his own red line. James for a quick line change. Almost got into the flight of that ball. Now it's back for Johns. Willie is there. Dangerfield. Great job to almost win that ball, and Johns would have been caught out of the net. Minnesota with some great changes right there. On the fly, here's Meppel. 7-6 force, a big shot too high. Marinara will pick it up. Try to cut back at a good work rate for Dennis Mepham to win this ball. Tries to turn it back out of some energy there. As Marinaro got a piece now, Hoskabee. Call letters, right? On Mother's Day. Hope you're enjoying this one. 7-6. Cleveland with the lead. Back for Tino Letiri. And he wants to call it at home. That's what happened last night, as we told you, with Dangerfield getting the goal. We'll see what happens here. Dargo heading it down for Mepham. Dangerfield came in on a collision after he won the ball with DeLuca. Now it's Lola Vegas to Hector Marinaro. Over the line he comes for Willie. Sent back for David Byrne at midfield. The net is empty to our left. Sixth attacker is Byrne. It's Marinaro from Lola Vegas. Try to play it in front. James blocked that. There were two to Byrne. Across for Lola Vegas. Holding it. Playing it for Kinsey. Gives it up. A burn shot is blocked. It came out. Burn almost got it. Marinaro does try to play it across. Kinsey not expecting it. He'll settle. Out to Lola Vegas. Now to Burn, who's open. From 40 feet, a hard shot punched out by John Jett. Stung Lola Vegas. A low one. That's why. Marinaro with it. It's a shooting gallery right now at the Richfield Coliseum. 249 left in the game. 7 6 Cleveland. Lola Vegas to Burn. Let's it fly. Too high. He'll get the rebound. He heads it down to Lola Vegas. Oh, they're putting some pressure on. Out to burn. 
Left side, Ola Vegas. 2.35 to go. Kinsey to burn. Corner for Dangerfield. Lola Vegas holding it. Wants to use the board. Dangerfield. Kinsey, one touch off the boards. And it's broken up and Cleveland dumps it. David Byrne with a player on his shoulder. That was Michael King. And now he changes and Hoskaby comes on. 2.15 to go. 7-6 Cleveland. Kinsey knocks it out to David Byrne. At the red line. He'll find Lola Vegas. Far side. Knocked away but sent all the way back to the neutral zone. Picked up. David Byrne. We've not seen Ali Kazumani in quite a while as well, so we don't know whether Cleveland's suffering some injuries or another benching. On the left, the Dangerfield shot is blocked. Not able to settle it as Kinsey. Haskovic. Sending it long for the red line. No. He needed a little bit of a breeze to get that one home. 141. All that's left in the game in regulation time. 7-6 Cleveland. Marinaro shot blocked by the Played out to Byrne. And now Jeff. So it's a little bit hard to figure out who should be their outstanding uh, player. Oh, there's a bad Three lines, yeah. yeah. That was as bad as the Jeffries era. Wanting to change up. Byrne to Fogarty. Etherington was going to come on, and now he's back on the bench. Jeffries to Dangerfield. Chris Dangerfield across the way. Hudson doesn't get a good ball, but he'll settle it. 113 to go. 7 6 Cleveland. In the corner and off the board, Judd missed it. Rebound forward, he couldn't find it. Tough break for Minnesota. This one far post, will he miss? Allen Willie, Hudson in the corner. Still loose, 55 seconds to play. Right across, hops by, Jeffries will get it with 50 seconds to go. 7-6 Cleveland, Dangerfield. Out to Byrne from 50. David Byrne marked up by Mepham to Jeffries and again. Belongs to Cleveland. And a giveaway again, Marinaro. Left side for Kinsey, 37 seconds left. Minnesota needs a goal to tie. Kinsey on the left, Dangerfield in the corner. Off the boards, open was Marinaro. Couldn't get the header down. 26 seconds left. Mepham, blocked by Marinaro, up to DeLuca. One more chance for Minnesota. 20 seconds, 18, 17. Burn the midfield. Right side, Marinaro. Now to Lola Vegas, holding it. Wanted Kinsey, that should do it. Seven seconds left, Nepo dumps it. That'll do it for Minnesota Strikers for the first time in their history. Lose a game that they led by as many as four goals. And the Cleveland Force have what has to be one of the finest comebacks that I've seen anyway in the MISL. After trailing four to nothing in a game that they needed to win, they came back scored seven goals while just giving up two to the Minnesota Strikers. A happy band, I'm sure, of Cleveland Force players, and then at least they can rest because the next game is not until Wednesday in Minnesota. Tough to play these back-to-back -back games as the Force and Strikers had to do today. Stay with us when we come back. Seamus Mallon will be talking with some of the winners from the Cleveland Force. A happy day for Cleveland. They win it 7-6. Seamus and I will be back in a moment.